Xbox One S. As you can see, the HDMI is quite damaged. It looks like it's had a little bite taken out of it. Let me show you how we fix it. Take a spudger, we're gonna wedge it in, and we're gonna start popping off this bottom piece. Now I'm gonna take these two pry tools. These are quite nice to get in, just in these tight spots to pop it. And we'll work our way down the edge here. Nothing fancy, just now this last section here, there's a sticker here that likes to hold on to things. So I'm gonna wedge under there and we're gonna pop up this section and it'll pop right off. Now that's a little bit dirty. Looks like I found a dried roach. That's gross. Hopefully there's no live ones in here because I have found live ones. Using a Torx 10, remove these screws. To make life easier, I'm gonna do everything I can just to keep them in order. Now, we'll flip this over. You can see how these kind of flare out. We'll flare out the sides. Man, that is dirty. I'll we'll pick up this guard here. Ah, that is nasty. Gross. Probably should have already been wearing these. Alright, let's go ahead and take out the hard drive. Two connectors here. You can pull up on them. Set that aside. Power supply. Gross. It's always a little awkward to detach with this clip over here. Like that. We'll set that aside. Disconnect the disk drive. Nasty. There's a little bracket here. We'll pull off. Now we'll drop down to a T8. And while we're at it, let's get rid of the screws on as well. Look at that build up. Gross. All right, we'll lift out this plastic piece here. And we should be able to separate the motherboard from the frame. That's just gross. Disconnect the fan. I take a pair of tweezers and we'll wedge on the side of the clip here and it'll pop right out. The same here. Just wedge pop, wedge pop, and then that'll come off. And then that will fall away. There we have the board out. Definitely needs a good cleaning. We'll make this nice and pretty again. The heat sink and fan unit. Just gross.
<coughs> here I've got some 138 solder. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pipe it here along the legs, along all of the pins. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna mix with the factory solder when I heat it up with these legs as well here in the back. But what's it, what it's gonna do is mix with the solder, the factory solder as I heat it up. And that's going to help the, the actual HDMI come off the board because it's gonna mix with the solder that's on there from the factory, which is typically around a 183 or 217. I've got my motherboard just hanging off the table here. Enough space here so I'm not burning my table. Take a pair of tweezers. We're gonna put our hot air workstation in. We're basically gonna max it out. We've got my 500 degrees Celsius with max airflow. For this next part, I'm gonna be using some 183 solder paste. I'm gonna get a little bit of it and we're gonna stick it there on all the pads, take a soldering iron. And all I'm gonna do is just add plenty of solder to all of these pads. Probably use a little bit too much there, but that's no big deal. All right, we got a good amount of solder on each one of those pads. Get out our new HDMI port. I'm gonna give the pins a quick little inspection, make sure they're all straight, not bent. Add some isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna clean up the burnt flux. Now we'll add some more flux. We'll add some powder paste into the holes there. We'll go and add more later, but it's really just to give us a good footing. We'll push this on down nice and firm. Now we'll come in below with our hotter rubber station again. All right, so I'm gonna take some new solder paste and we're gonna go in and we're gonna reinforce each one of these pins. Some are making okay contact, but there's not enough solder to where I'm comfortable. So I've laid out a bead of solder paste here that I can pull from as I need it. We'll get our soldering iron and I'll dab it in there and we'll carefully approach each pin and deposit more solder on the pins like this. Nice and easy. Do one at a time, just making sure that each one is nice and solid so we don't get any bridging between them. This will guarantee a strong joint and a stable image. And if you'd like to go over it a second time, you can. Just to make sure, got plenty of solder on each one of the pins. I like to see a nice little ramp of solder going from the tip of the pin down to the end of the pad. It basically allows for maximum solder without bridging two pins together. If you bridge two pins, it's pretty easy to separate them. You might need to wick away the solder or just use the right soldering iron tip to help kind of pull the solder away, add some flux. Uh, it's pretty easy to do it this method. Now there's plenty of other methods for this. If you have any, leave them in the comments below. Now I'm going to add some more solder paste and heat it up from behind. This will allow the solder to flow through the holes going down all the way to the other side of the board. And as you can see, we now have nice shiny solder all the way through and through on those pins. Plenty of solder deposited without any bridging and the legs are definitely gonna hold up to any wear and tear. All right, now that that is all replaced, let's address the thermal paste. Dried out a little bit, actually a lot of bit. We'll get our new thermal paste. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Kind of in an X pattern here, 
don't necessarily have to do it this way, but I found that this design gives the best coverage, and that's plenty. That might be too much. Here's an example of what that would look like. Right there, all the way covered. Now we'll go and clean that up. We'll apply it again. Get the heat sink. This is gonna go in the corner on the connector. Get rid of all the old hard thermal paste. Line up the holes. And we'll try to set it down nice and level. Look in one side. There, with all four hooked in, should be good there. Go ahead and reconnect the fan. Go ahead and slide in all of the ports. And push down. And grab the bracket here. Take our disk drive. Connect up two connectors. Reconnect the power supply. And connect up the hard drive. Grab the plastic bar here. And put back the last few screws here. There. I installed the side pieces and slide this down and inside. And then we'll open this up so the sides can go in. And we'll drop in all these green screws. Now I'm sure there'll be a lot of comments that are like, Hey boy, why didn't you test it before closing it all the way up? Well, when you're confident, you're confident. Let's go test it out. Let's plug it in. And would you look at that? We've got our Xbox One. We got an image. That's all we need to know.